G'day guys and welcome to our lesson on electromagnetic induction in a bar. This is a special lesson which looks at, at a very particular case of electric current induction where a bar is moving through a magnetic field. So pictured below, I've got a magnetic field here coming out of the page. I've got a bar moving to the left at some velocity v. That bar contains both positive and negative charges. The negative charges would be electrons and the positive charges would be protons or the nucleus. If these charges are moving in with the bar and the entire bar is moving to the left, it's like saying each individual charge is moving at that same velocity there. We know that when charges move through a magnetic field, they experience some kind of force. And we can tell the direction of that force by using the right hand slap rule. So place your thumb in the direction not of the bar, but the way the charges are moving, which is to the left there, of your right hand. And if you straighten out your hand, and then point your fingers towards your face. So I've got my hand basically pointing toward, my, the palms pointing towards the ceiling, uh, my right thumb is pointing to the left and my fingers are almost touching my face. The palm points upwards. So the force on positive charges moving this way here will be in that direction there. Positive charges. Now to find the force on the negative charges we basically point our right thumb in the opposite direction. So pointing your fingers with a straight hand into the screen and your thumb that way, my palm is pointing downwards in the opposite direction. So the force on negative charges is predictably opposite to that on the positive charges. So this end of the bar is where all the negative charges end up. Since we have now the positive charges being pushed this way and the negative charges being pushed this way, if we suddenly stop this bar moving, they would all flood back with some energy to, their, uh, to a uniform spread. This tells us we have an EMF, a voltage along this bar. And the voltage we get along this bar is given by this formula up here. EMF in volts is given by the velocity here, multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field, multiplied by the length of the bar. So the longer the bar, the more EMF you'll get, the stronger the magnetic field, the more EMF you'll get. And the faster you move that bar, the faster the charges are moving through the magnetic field, the more force they experience. Let's pop in some real values to see how we can apply these formulae. So there's one place on Earth where, well naturally, magnetic field lines come directly upwards. So say this is a bird's eye view. And that would be over the magnetic North Pole. So actually somewhere around the geographic South Pole. Because the magnetic North Pole is sitting at the geographic South Pole. If you flew an aeroplane over the magnetic North Pole in the Antarctic somewhere, you would experience or measure a voltage across your wings of the aeroplane. So here's the aeroplane flying in that direction. Let's fill in some values and our end goal is to calculate the EMF, the voltage or the electromotive force across the wings here. So the wingspan, say it's a 747 is around 70 meters. The velocity, I think if it's around 600, 700 kilometers an hour, that's 167 meters per second. And the strength of the magnetic field around the Earth, it's quite weak. B is only six, well I've got 60, times 10 to the negative 6 Tesla.
I'm hoping this is right. I picked it up from a textbook somewhere. So let's fill in the formulae. EMF is equal to VBL, which is equal to 167 times 60 times 10 neg 6 times 70. And I have that coming to 167. zero point seven volts so nothing really to worry about but if there were any very sensitive electronics in the wings they might experience some kind of anomalous behavior so rubbing out our real figures for a second if that's all you want to know about how to solve these questions you're done I want to show you why the formula well, one explanation for why the formula works. It's because the bar is actually tracing out an area when it's moving to the left there. So the area it's tracing out, if it's moving at V meters per second, we can see a little while ago, it must have been back here. And this length here, the distance it traveled in a certain amount of time, is V times delta T. The length here is L. So the flux in here is equal to B times A. This formula here, which is equal to B times V delta T times L and the change in flux so how quickly this flux is uh, becomes dis like you know dis it, how quickly this flux disappears or is no longer relevant is delta T in delta T seconds it will be completely swept through so actually no the change in flux is not delta T the time what was that L the time taken is delta T so to find EMF, we say it's the change in flux over the change in time. The change in flux is B V delta T on L oh, times L all over delta T. That just comes to B V L. Or in other words, our EMF formula there. So it's sweeping out a flux in that area. There are, there are other different explanations for the right-hand slap rule which I'll go through if I get the chance later.